Welcome back to Mr. Gard's Maths class. Today we're going to be talking about areas of shapes and in particular rectangles. Initially we need to think why do we even need to be able to work out the area of a shape. Importantly in many trades today we need to work out area in order to work out how much of a product we might need to buy. In the building industry, little examples that I've put onto our screen here and here show people painting and possibly plastering. If you're going to be painting a room, a painter needs to know how much paint they need to order. By measuring the size of the room, they can get a rough estimate for how many litres of paint they're going to require for the job and therefore give a quote to the person whose house is being painted. A similar example is tiling. You need to buy the tiles before you start tiling a room. Now tiles are not cheap, so it's important that you buy just the right amount. You don't want to find yourself tiles short or too many tiles because it is a waste of money or an inconvenience in time. So tilers need to determine the area of the floor that they are in fact tiling. In many of today's examples, we're going to be using the unit centimetre squared. That is a single unit measurement. Now we could be using metres squared, um, kilometres squared, millimetres squared, but for today's purposes, we're going to refer to centimetre square. That means how many one by one little squares would fit in that shape. The first example I'm going to show you is here. How many different ways can we make a 12 square centimetre shape or 12 centimetres squared? A really simple one is to simply have 12 of these little squares. If each line or between those dots is one centimetre, I am fitting 12 of the little square centimetres in this shape. You might notice that it's one centimetre high and 12 centimetres across. That shape is made up of 12 square centimetres. Another way of making a 12 centimetre square shape is to put those squares in a different setup, one similar to this. You will notice that I still have 12 of the little squares uh, coloured in or traced around. And in this case, it is two centimetres high and six centimetres across. Now we're going to see the connection there if you haven't already seen it. Another one of 12 centimetres squared. All of these shapes take up the same amount of space. This time, I'm making it with these dimensions. Still the same number of squares. This time, three high and four across. That too has 12 centimetres squared. You may have quickly recognised that the way in which we can work this out is we can multiply the sides, one side by the other side. Simply by multiplying three by four, we get 12 square centimetres. Two by six is 12, one by 12 is 12. We could even have it 24 times 0 0.5. That too would equal 12 square centimetres. Our golden rule, therefore, for the area of a rectangle is multiplying the length times the width. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you want to call the width the height or the length the height, provided you have those two dimensions multiplied by one another. A square is also a rectangle, 
though a square has sides that are all equal in length and have four 90 degree angles. So we can look at that as calling it length times length or length squared as all sides of a square are equal. To give you some really quick examples should you need it, the first one that I have is a purple square with side lengths three centimetres. You will notice that I have included those little dashes to signify that each side of the square is equal. I'll write my formula out for the area of a square first, where L, the length, is represented by a three. So three multiplied by three, the area equals nine. Now it's important when we are writing our units, well, that we include them initially, centimetres, but then remembering that it's centimetres squared because it is centimetres times centimetres. Similarly, similarly, for the example below, the area for a rectangle is length times width. So one side multiplied by the other side. The area in this case is 5 multiplied by 2, which equals 10 centimetres squared. It's important to also remember that it doesn't actually matter which side you refer to as being the length and which side you refer to as being the width, as it doesn't matter which way around you multiply those two. So just bear that in mind. That's all for today's lesson. Hopefully that made some sense and good luck with your questions.